11, 2001. You hear someone say, somebody's just flown a plane into the World Trade Center. What was your immediate response? We did not appreciate and did not have the full knowledge that this was an airliner that had been deliberately flown into the World Trade Center. We want to tell you what we know as we know it, but we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. We don't know if it would have been deliberate or accidental. We know so little now. And so it wasn't until we learned the oh second God. aircraft. Oh my God. <laughs> that looks like a second plane that we ended our meeting and then moved to where we could see those images on the television like every other America. And that's when we knew that our nation was under attack. And what were your marching orders then at that point? We needed to get armed missiles built up and then loaded up onto our aircraft. And then we also needed to get the authorization to launch. And both of those were a challenge. But then at some point, you are told that you need to be prepared to shoot to kill. The region commander has declared that we can shoot down aircraft that do not respond to our direction. Copy that. You're flying a plane where you don't have that ability to shoot. And so what were you supposed to do then? When Sass and I took off, we did not have missiles. We were on a suicide mission. And in order to be able to take any airliner down, Sass would ram his aircraft into the cockpit where the terrorists were to destroy the flight controls. And I would take the tail. By targeting both ends of the aircraft, it was our plan to prevent it from any additional casualties. And how did that, you know, when that dawns on you that that may be your call. Does it register? Are you processing that? Or you're just thinking, okay, this is the mission at hand and, and we need to operate accordingly? Anyone who had seen the footage of and the videos uh, of what had happened Get out of here. knew what needed to be done. And I had raised my hand and sworn an oath to protect and defend our nation. What was going through my mind was that if this was where the universe had placed me at this point in time, that this was my purpose. Anyone who had been in our position would have been willing to do the same thing. And the proof is in the pudding because the passengers on Flight 93 did. Just going back to you for a moment, is there a prayer? Is there, are there tears? Are there, or you just react and you're not feeling? There was no second guessing. We knew what needed to be done. and there was no tears. The prayers, to be honest, was simply knowing that, dear God, don't let me mess this up. We talked about your first mission that day. Ultimately, um, it changes, right? Tell me then about when you're tasked with making sure that the president lands safely. I finally landed and then took off for a second sortie. We did a combat air patrol, this time with armed uh, missiles, and then eventually went out to intercept um, Air Force One with President Bush, who is also being escorted by other fighters, other F-15s as well, to be able to bring him back home into Andrews Air Force Base safely. You know, I've been told